welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together the blocks for the quilt called Louisiana Breeze. If you'd like to purchase this pattern, please visit our website. Okay, this is named Louisiana Breeze because actually the block in um, that we're putting together is called Louisiana. And by putting the light background square or rectangles on two sides, I kind of had the um, the pinwheels kind of float through the quilt, so they're, they're blowing in the breeze. So we're going to be using two and a half inch pre-cut strips, and we're going to add a white just to try and tone it down a little bit and create blocks like these. So beginning, we're going to be cutting from each of our two and a half inch print strips. I've got one marked here, and I'll just open it up for you. You're going to be cutting um, two and a half inch squares and four and a half inch rectangles from each strip. And that means that you can create, um, they can be then used as either the background or these rectangles or as the parts of the pinwheel. So you'll get to use all of the fabrics in each of the placements that you see in the quilt. In order to put these together, what we're going to be starting with is um, you're going to be cutting your white uh, according to your pattern. You've got rectangles of different sizes. So you've got small rectangles and then you have two larger ones. The larger ones you're going to set aside because those, those are going to be added to the block at the very end. We're going to start with the um, smaller rectangles and when in this example we're going to I'm going to show you how to put together what we call um, a flying goose unit. The flying geese are, are made um, in many different ways. And this one, since we have pre-cut two and a half inch strips, we kind of have to go back to a very traditional method. So what we're gonna do is take squares and we're gonna mark them diagonally from corner to corner. So there's one, and we'll mark a second one. There's a line there, but it got kind of light, so I'm gonna mark it just a little darker so you can see it. And I can see it when we, we go to sew. Now these are going to be placed onto the rectangle one at a time. And what I've done is marked our, my sewing line from corner to corner. And we're going to open it up like this. We have to make sure that we have this open before we add the second one because of the intersection of the white triangle. So here, we'll put it together. And nice part about this is that you um, are sewing right on the line, so you don't have to worry about your quarter inch seam yet at this point. So quarter, um, right on the line or right to the edge of the line, diagonally. Now for time purposes, I'm just going to open this up and finger press it, but I would normally take this to the iron and make sure that I open this up all the way and press. And we want to make sure that that, tri that triangle covers that piece underneath completely. And then I'm going to just use a scissors and I'm going to trim away the excess fabric underneath. You don't waste too much, just some small triangles. And now we're going to add the second um, square in order to make the triangle on the other side. This is a process that takes a little bit of time, but it's Sometimes there's just a lot of um, enjoyment just comes from the process of making the pieces that go into our, to our quilts. So each stitch is a work of love. Okay, now we've got that second one on. And again, we're gonna wanna open that up all the way. Make sure that it covers that triangle underneath, if it's accurate. And then we're going to trim away the extra triangle underneath here. I'm going to take this over to the ironing surface here and give it a, a nice press so you can see how accurate it came out. If we had more time, we would have pressed in between each one, but there we go. We've got a flying geese unit, and then we're going to be adding to each of those, we're going to add a rectangle so that we have then, we would create four that match like this. And that creates that pinwheel in the center from the placement that we use. So we're turning, we're always putting the white triangle towards the center. So we are putting together like this, like this, and like this. We've got that pinwheel effect by simply joining these into one row, these into another, and then joining the rows. And then at that point, you're going to be adding the rectangle 
shorter of the, there's two long rectangles, one is a little shorter than the other, on just two sides, but always place on the same two, on the same two sides. And I'll show you the back. If you press really well, things will be um, lay really nice for when you get to your quilting process. You want that to be neat and clean in the back. Okay, now all the blocks look like this, but they're all placed a little bit different in the um, actual quilt. So follow the diagrams that come with your pattern. We've got great graphic artists that are going to show you exactly the placement. So that white bar is on the lower um, right hand side, then it moves to the top right hand side and dances back and forth getting that um, Louisiana breeze, blowing in the breeze kind of look to your quilt. If you'd like to see more of our quilting quickly or tutorials, you can visit our website. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you.